Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Today we're talking about two things. We are talking about uh, this budget live broadcasting room that I built for a client and what um, how that how well that has come together. I want to talk about that a little bit. Just a little bit of update on the uh, GH5 shoot. So if you didn't see yesterday's video, click there. Yesterday, not now if you're watching live, but if you're not watching live, you can click there. Yesterday we did a little kind of live behind the scenes as I was shooting with the GH5 for the first time. And that was me at a skate park shooting this really cool skater dude. And and why do I want this? Why do I want? I don't want this. I left it out there because I don't want it. Well-meaning assistance. And uh, had a great time shooting with it. Learned a lot. And I will be posting some of those results today, little teaser ones, on my Instagram feed. So make sure you're following me on Instagram at Photo Joseph. That is going to be your first chance to see a couple of the shots off of the GH five and the rest of the stuff I will be continue to be shooting and I'll edit together and release as a proper proper video quick bunch of people in here in the live stream this morning shout outs you made the live stream yes the burns tech yes you did mark good morning to you silly good morning to you as well Novak Tom hey Tom uh GH5 versus 6500 I don't even know what the 6500 is um, slow message morning. When's your next interview with the GH5 spokesperson? That would be Sean. That interview was Tuesday evening. It is done. It is edited. It has been uploaded. It is on YouTube, almost ready for me to make public. Uh, that will happen probably by tomorrow. We are going to go through and time code mark every single question so that it's easy to find the questions because we broke it into four parts and it's actually, I don't even know what the full time is. It was like two and a half hours long. It was really, really long, but that will go up very, very soon. Um, Yash, good morning to you too. So, uh, the GH5 experience yesterday, again, super awesome. Uh, the autofocus performance, I'll just say this is really, really amazing. One of the things you have in there, and I noted this in yesterday's live video was you do have a substantial amount of control over the autofocus. You can control autofocus speed and, um, what's the other one? Uh, speed and, uh, crap, something. Anyway, it's, it's curious that you have this control and, Figuring out where to set the settings is definitely something that is going to take some more time. I played with a variety of settings and shot largely the same thing, skaters going around. Um, I haven't analyzed each one to see which settings worked out best, but I have grabbed a couple of clips that I do want to share, and I am going to be sharing today on my Instagram feed. So again, follow at Photo Joseph to see those today. That'll be the first preview look at that. All right, so let's move on with what today's video is about, and it is about this budget studio. So a couple of days ago, I was in my client's office setting up a live broadcast studio for them on a limited budget link to that right there and we uh, we i put together a uh f as low budget as i could and still have what i would consider to be acceptable quality for a high quality youtube stream now uh, or facebook or whatever they are using one camera which makes the whole thing a lot easier no crazy switching none of that now they are going to be using zoom the uh web casting web conferencing system the nice thing about zoom is that within zoom you can actually switch to your screen so there's no multi-camera switching but the client will be able to switch to their screen or to the camera uh, and i think they can do a picture in picture as well i'm not totally sure what zoom allows there but that is something that will allow um, allow them to do at least that level of switching with this setup. Zoom, basically the setup makes your Mac think that you've got a webcam, that it's just a, a glorified webcam, and that's what it is. So we're going to go through those piece by piece. I'm going to explain why I chose each piece of that that I did and um, and where it could be better, maybe could have saved some, even some more money, and so on. Quick uh, run through on the other comments here and here. Oh, we're talking about the Sony 6500. I'm not going to do a, a comparison with 6500. So just to remind those of you, or maybe some of you are new and don't know, I am actually sponsored by Lumix. I am a Lumix luminary. And so this is how I have access to this camera early. I don't do camera comparisons. I don't review other cameras. Um, it's just not what I do. There's plenty of people out there doing comparison videos and when the GH5 is actually out for sure, I'm sure everybody will compare that camera to everything under the sun. That's not what I do. Uh, I'm, I'm using it as a photographer. I do shoot Lumix cameras through for all of my work. And, um, so I'm showing it just my experience and the fact that I get a hands-on or early hands-on and it makes it even more fun. But, um, I am biased. I always, I always say that I am biased because I, I love the brand. I love the people behind the brand, but when it comes to it, this GH5 is a freaking amazing camera. And so bias aside, it, it still rocks. Um, but there, I will not be doing a comparison to other cameras directly that I leave that to many of the other people out there. Um, 
All right, so let's see other comments here, and then I'm gonna jump into this. Um, is nowhere near the Sony. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the Sony. Oh, contrast detector. Okay, somebody's talking about autofocus comparisons. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know what the Sony does. Um, I just know that this camera is stinking fast. And Juggermot is saying, while wow, live chat and live video, this is awesome. There you go. You shoot Sony only, but you're interested in Micro Four Thirds. Well, then you have come to the right place. Although today's not about Micro Four Thirds, but plenty of my videos are. Okay, so let's get this thing started. Um, basic setup for this low budget video conferencing. Uh, live streaming thing. You need a good camera, you need good sound, you need good light. Those are the three things that you have to have. You cannot compromise on these. Now, you can spend a little bit of money on a good camera, you can spend a whole lot of money on a good camera. You can spend a little money on a good mic, you spend a whole lot of money on a good mic, and so on and so on. And so again, I was trying to do this for as reasonable of a budget as possible. So let's start with the camera. Using a DSLR, Canon, Nikon, DSLR, and so on, maybe you already own one. This is going to be great. I can just flip open the mirror and turn that on and get a, a feed out the HDMI, which I'm going to then use as a webcam. The problem is all those cameras will close the mirror after a certain amount of time, and so it's not really viable. So you go, okay, well, that's what mirrorless does, right? This is why mirrorless is so great. So you get a, an inexpensive mirrorless camera. You can buy a video cam, like a handy cam video camera, for less than you can buy a good mirrorless camera with a bigger zoom range. You don't need super shallow depth of field, so you don't care about some super fast lens. And for a lot less money, you can buy a little handy cam from any number of manufacturers out there that's HD, full 1080p, you don't need 4K for this, and get away with it. And so that's what I did. I looked at a few different cameras, and the one that I chose, let's go to my Mac, is this one here, um, Panasonic, again, you know, I am biased towards the Panasonic cameras, but you can't beat the price. So this is a $500 full HD camcorder, and this does the trick. Now, when I say it does the trick, there's a couple of things that it needs to do, and this one does them. And by the way, the no, the um, what do you call it? The links to all of these are going to be are already in the notes down below, so you can go click on any of these and follow along. Um, the camera needs to be powered by an external power supply and maintain power, right? The external power supply can't just charge it, it has to actually power it because the camera just basically needs to be on all the time. Check, this camera does that. The HDMI out needs to be full 1080p HDMI. Check, this camera does that. It needs to have a microphone input port. Check, it does that. And a um, good zoom range, which it does. Now, the only kind of bummer about using a video camera like this versus a, a still camera with a fixed, with an actual lens, uh, zoom lens on it that you rotate the dial on, Every time you power the camera down, it loses its zoom position, right? Everything goes and zooms back. So when you turn it on, you have to re-zoom, reposition the camera. So that's a bit of a bummer. But considering that the only way to get that would be to spend at least twice as much, it's a small compromise to pay for. Uh, let's see, quick other comments in here I'm going to look at. Um, let's see here. Uh, to, did I test the XLR adapter? I'm talking about the GH5. No, I don't have that. And Sally, even with a faster refresh of 480 hertz for the processor, okay, there's like, now there's debating between the cameras. I'm not gonna get involved in that. You guys have fun on that one. Okay, so there's the camcorder that I chose. Again, you can buy camcorders from lots of different manufacturers in that same price range. I chose the Panasonic because I know them, I love them. And um, no, I didn't get a good deal on this or anything like that. I just bought this through B&H like anybody else would. So there's the first step, the camera. Now let's talk about sound. So. Cameras like this are going to have a, a microphone input jack, a little uh, eighth inch microphone input jack. From my research, I've, I've concluded that some cameras have power on there and some do not. And it's really hard to know whether it does or not. This seems to be something that's not really listed in the specs. And so you don't know if you plug in a lav mic, just a simple little wired lav mic, if you plug it in, if it's going to get enough power to really drive it and give you good sound. Even if it does, okay, even if it does, the preamp, the thing that amplifies the audio, provides that power, built into the camera is gonna be pretty small and probably not very good. So a better option, even if the camera will support a mic just plugged into it, is to have some type of preamp on there. And so I was looking for a low cost, affordable preamp with a mic solution. And B&H has this nice little bundle, which is, let me find the right one, here we go. A nice little bundle here, that is this Zoom H1 recorder and it comes with the Rode SmartLav mic, which I love. I really, really, really like this microphone. And then because this mic is actually designed for your iPhone, see it's got the TRRS port, it's got the three black bands. You need an adapter, so it comes with that as well. And the advantage of having this kit is you can use, you can now use this mic on your iPhone. So if you decide that you want to go 
live just from your phone. You know, normally you're doing your live setup like this, but oh, and I wanna go live on my phone. We well, now you already have a microphone you can take with you, plug straight into your iPhone or your Android phone and go live with that. So that's a nice little bonus in here. The other nice bonus about this was that by using this recorder, even though I'm not using it as a recorder and not using the microphones, I'm just using it as a preamp, this gives me the added benefit that because this has its own mics built into it, right? That's what these are right here, little microphones. If my client decides that instead of just one person on camera, they're gonna have two, she wants to have an interview style, um, she can do that, right? She can use this mic, forget the lab, take it out, set this on the table and have a reasonable microphone between two people. So this gives a considerable amount of flexibility in there, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna come back to these comments afterwards because you guys are all talking about the GH5 stuff, which is great, but I wanna get through this and I'll come back and address your GH5 questions. Okay, um, so that's that was the mic setup. So now from this, you've got, as I showed you, I don't need to jump to back to the full screen. Um, you've got the microphone that it comes with, you got the adapter, so there's your full kit. Now I need to run this microphone to the camera. So that's just a standard eighth inch stereo cable. Um, it's a quite a long run. I think, what did I buy? A 25 foot cable. And so let's see, here's the one. I wanted to get something nice and heavy duty. So I got this one, this monoprice cable from Amazon, which I will tell you right now, this costs three times as much on Amazon as it does on monoprice, but I got free shipping on Amazon and with monoprice, it was gonna pay for shipping and it's gonna take a week to get here. So there you go. Um, but this is a really heavy duty cable, which I did and you can see the left and right channels are shielded separately. So that's good for a long run. Clearly when audio is important as it always is, you don't wanna have any interference in there. So I wanted a big beefy cable. So there's the audio run. Okay, so now we've got our mic preamp audio run to the camera. Um, so now the camera is, it's got its video from the camera, obviously, the audio from the mic, and now it's got to send the signal back to the computer. It's going to send it back to the computer over HDMI. So again, we need a long HDMI cable. So that would be, uh, this guy just got this standard um, straight off of Amazon, Cable Matters 25 foot HDMI cable. Um, and it's got micro HDMI on one end because that's what the camera outputs and then standard HDMI on the other end to plug into the, uh, the, the converter, which we'll take a look at in just a second. So you've got the, um, uh, you've got your long HDMI run, HDMI coming to the computer that has both your video and your audio, uh, all nicely in sync. So I could have run the audio into the computer directly, but then I would always be worried about sync issues. This way, by feeding it into the camera, I don't have to worry about sync issues in there. So that's cool. All right, uh, let's see here. Now the HDMI comes to the computer. How do we convert that into a signal that the computer can use? So now you need an HDMI to something on the computer signal. I have, when I was building this studio, I went through a bunch of different of these converters, tried a bunch of different ones for a bunch of manufacturers. And unfortunately, the only one that was perfectly reliable, always worked the way I wanted it to, was the most expensive one that I could find naturally because that's always the way it works so this is one area where you really can't cheap out and that is this guy the epifan avio av.io um hd usb3 video grabber so this is it, you see it's got a dvi port but it comes with an hdmi to dvi adapter on one end and then it is just usb3 on the other it's 350 bucks so this is not a cheap tool but what this does is it basically makes any hdmi signal go into your computer and your computer think of it, see it as a webcam. You could plug another computer into it. You could plug the most expensive camera in the world into it, whatever, it doesn't matter. It goes HDMI in and the computer, Mac OS, now just sees it as a webcam, which means Google Hangouts will be able to use it. Skype will be able to use it. Zoom will be able to use it. Any webcasting, um, uh, FaceTime will be able to use it. Any kind of webcast, video chatting software will use it because it just thinks it's a USB webcam. I used, uh, I think one of the first ones I bought was a Blackmagic HDMI to Thunderbolt connector, and most services won't see it as a webcam, and so they just don't recognize it. Uh, went through, like I said, a lot of different things. This is the one that I settled on. This one works. They also make a 4K version of this adapter, so if you're doing 4K, it costs more. I think it's maybe $500, so it's, you know, it's definitely more money, but if you don't need the 4K, then you buy the HD one. So there, now we've got it in. So that, I think, is the entire configuration there other than the lights, right? Did I miss anything? Oh, a tripod. You know, I just, uh, whatever. Just got a, a cheap video tripod. It doesn't need to be a good solid tripod because this is not moving. This is not being uh, moved around the studio at all. No one's panning it or anything. It's locked and ready. So any, any tripod would do. For 50 bucks, this was a, a good, reasonable tripod that I figure is not gonna fall over after a year. Uh, now lighting. So lighting is the area that I definitely cheaped out on on here and 
it, it seems to be fine, but I'm not super impressed with these lights, but they work. So the lighting kit that I bought was this here, this impact soft and natural four socket three lighting kit. So what you get is three light heads with this four bulb adapter. So four bulbs in it, a rectangular soft box, the light stands, all the bulbs you need, which is a dozen bulbs, uh, a carrying case, which I don't care about. And yeah, there you go. So there's the full setup. This was disappointingly dim. It wasn't as bright as I expected it to be. I have a different kit like this with four bulbs in it. And I didn't realize the one that I have, the bulbs are physically a lot larger. These were quite small. Um, but with all three lights turned on and given time to warm up, because they're CFL bulbs, so they do take time to warm up, um, one, maybe you know a couple of minutes and you, you should be good. It's enough light. I would like more light, but it's enough. And the, uh, the next step alternative that I was looking at was LED lights. And I think it was gonna be almost triple the price by the time I got the lights and the light stands and diffusers and everything else. And so I think, I think for the bargain, for the price of it, it was just $300 for this kit. It works out well, it's good enough. Um, if I was doing it myself, I'd probably spend a little bit more money, but we're trying to keep within budget for the client. So that's what we did. Okay, the last part of this is the room, the room treatment. So, um, oh, sorry, no, one more thing, the ethernet cable. So I'm running hardwired ethernet internet because you do not want to do this over wireless. You never want to do live streaming over wireless. You want to be on a hardwire, too many things to interfere with wireless. This whole live streaming thing is wrought with issues as it is. It's hard enough to get right as it is. Don't go wireless, um, you use the cable. So I got a 70 foot or actually 100 foot cable on order and I'm going to run that through their ceilings over to the router. So that, that's an easy one, but you know, go wired, go hardwired on that for sure. Okay, um, so the last part is the room treatment, the acoustic treatment. The room that we're in is quite, and you saw that room if you looked at the video from the other day, it's quite, um, it's quite echoey. I mean, it's just a big rectangular room, perfectly right angle corners, which are horrible for sound. Uh, it's just basically a, an acoustic nightmare in there. There's carpeting on the floor and there are those office kind of acoustic panel tiles on the, on the ceiling, but it's still horrible. So we need some kind of diffusion on there. So the company that I use, is called um, RLX. And let's see, I think I did I pull up their website. I did. Uh, here's RLX's website. So A U R A L E X, so RLX.com. And these guys do acoustic paneling like this. So you get all these different foam panels and you have to figure out what you need to do and where to put them. Well, the really cool thing about these guys is that you can send them a schematic of your room, tell them what you're using it for, where your camera, mic, speaker placement is, whatever you're using it for, whatever audio thing, if it's a listening room or recording room, whatever. Give them a diagram of the room and they will send and tell them what your budget is and they will send you back a schematic telling you what to put where and it will only come in at about twice your budget. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, acoustic paneling, you know, good stuff isn't cheap. Um, but it works, it makes a huge difference. This room sounds as good as it does because I have paneling. You can't see them, but I've got these purple panels all over the place, the ceiling and the walls in here. The only unex completely exposed area is behind me, but it works out quite well. So what they do is they send over something like this. So this is a schematic of the room. So that you see they do this uh, top down and what do they call it? Collapsed or uh, I forget what it's called. But anyway, these are the walls here. So there's the left wall, right wall, back wall, front wall. And the green panels here are uh, two by four foot pro panels. They're little, uh, just the big foam panels on there. And then the blue ones in the corner. So this is vertical view. This is the side view. These sit in the corner as base traps. And so you can see here, they've got me putting them in these corners, but not back here. You can see the placement of the paneling all the way around. And so they really design what you should do. Now, obviously, if you decide that that's not in your budget or you can't do that, you can spend less money, do less panels, but at least you have an idea of where to put things and that really helps. And so the budget for these panels, for the what they put together there came in about, I think 16 or $1,700. So again, acoustic paneling, not cheap, but if you want room to sound good, you gotta do it. You gotta do something about it. Now the cheap way to do it would be just to get a bunch of blankets, right, and staple them to the wall. And that's better than nothing, absolutely, but it's not gonna be as good as this. So that's one of those things to, to consider. Okay, that's basically that room. I know that it had come up before uh, someone was asking why the live stream from in the client's office a couple days ago, so it was that Tuesday, was so bad. Um, and that has been since been replaced. If you watch it now, then it's it looks fine. Uh, I was using my, my um, uh, Teradek VDU. I connected to their wireless network. It's connecting to, everything seemed to be working. I connected to, um, to YouTube live. And I don't know, 
this is this is one of the frustrations I have with the Teradek VDU. Um, often, even though YouTube was telling me that it was getting a good signal, the VDU kept telling me it's a bad signal. And clearly the video was right because it was a bad signal, but it didn't seem to be a bandwidth issue because I had plenty of bandwidth. So I don't know, man. It's just that's mm, one of those really, really frustrating things. And that's why I don't use that product very often anymore. OK, uh, let's go. Let's go through these questions here. So it's but um, wrong thing. A lot of questions coming up. So let me just scroll through these and see what we've got in here. And by the way, guys, just you know, don't forget. Um, do try to promote this little show here. Let me do this little tap here, bring this thing up again. Um, you know, I've got the little Patreon thing. If you guys love the stuff that I'm doing here, support through Patreon is a big help. Or visit my Linda site. Just go to um, uh, go to lynda.com and search for Photo Joseph or go to photojoseph.com slash Linda and that'll take you there as well. I'm a, a trainer, on uh, educator on Linda. Got a lot of stuff on there. And every little bit of that helps contribute to the bottom line here and helps keep things on the air. So please, please don't forget to to contribute and help where you can. Okay, so let's see, I'm skipping past the argument about the Sony cameras. Um, let's see, Burnstack is saying, I bet this camera would work as a vlogging camera. Uh, not quite sure which camera you're talking about there, but if you're talking about the GH5, um, yes, but just like every other camera, HDMI out. Um, the USB-C port does not give you video out. That's something we answered in the question yesterday. Does this handy cam do 4K or 1080p? This one that I showed up on screen, it was a 1080p camera. The 4K version costs more, but we don't need 4K for this, so we're good. Um, oh, there you go. Burns Tech is saying there's a 4K variant. It's about $800. Uh, uh, Subversive saying it's not just about 400 frame per second read through. Okay, you're talking about autofocus again, so we're going to skip that. Does that mic work with the iPhone 7? Yes, that was the Rode SmartLav Plus Pro something. Hold on, pull it back up again. That was this guy right here. Yes, this works with the iPhone. Oh, with the iPhone 7, yes, with the lightning to audio adapter that the iPhone comes with. Yes, obviously it's not gonna plug in directly, but yes, it does work. I use that one quite a bit. Um, whenever I'm wired, that is the choice that I use. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, so Versus says in the GH5 does have new prediction algorithm. Okay, you're still talking about focus there. Um, Sully, so love cable matters. Yeah, cable matters is great stuff. Good, solid, reliable cables, excellent. Um, the AVIO is awesome, confirming that. Excellent. Novak, you love me. Well, thank you, Novak. I love you too. And Burnstack, I suggest if you can afford the 350, you can spring for the 4K one. It's only 50 bucks more. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't realize there's only 50 more. Um, that did, I mean, as it is, we're over budget. So yes, so he's saying that the, uh, or she, I don't know, the Burnstack is saying that the AV.io 4K version is only 50 bucks more. Considering we're putting in an HD camera, this is all web streaming. There's no way this person is going 4K saving the budget. There's just no reason for it. Um, if I was buying it for me, I would definitely buy the 4K one. But for this, there's no reason to. Um, don't forget to send me that camera after you're done. Well, it's it's in the links. All this info is in, oh, send you the GH5. Sure thing, no problem. I'll get right on that. Uh, everybody's arguing over who gets it first. You guys are great. Um, all righty, let's see here. Scrolling through, kudos, kudos. Thank you very much. Uh, just a bit talking about what I've already talked about here. And plug being that it's USB 3 can be portable to use in any modern PC or Mac. Again, talking about Burnstack, talking about the AV.io. It works on anything, any Mac, I, I'm assuming PC as well, and it's class compliant. That's the key with the AV.io. It does not need drivers. I have bought too much hardware over the years that the drivers don't get updated for the next OS, either right away or if ever, and I end up with shelves full of hardware that I cannot use. I've stopped buying hardware that requires drivers. If I buy audio gear, it's class compliant. Video gear, it's class compliant. If I need a driver to make it work, I ain't buying it. I'm tired of this crap. I have wasted too much money over the years on this, not doing it anymore. So keep that in mind, class compliant or nothing. That is my advice. Uh, let's see here. Um, Burns text listening, an alternative to sound dampening foam. If you have the skills or know someone, you can make two by four foot frames and use towels and hang them on the wall. This works great. Wonderful. So that's a great thing to, to consider. Like I said, uh, hanging blankets is an alternative. Hanging, hanging towels is an alternative. The foam is not just random foam. Just it's worth pointing out. This isn't like a packing material foam. It's a couple of things. It is, um, I guess the right density would be the right way to put it, to allow certain acoustic frequencies through and to reflect certain frequencies. It's, it's very fine tuned. Plus, it's fire retardant, which if you're putting in a commercial space and you hang blankets on the walls and the fire marshal comes by, you're in trouble. So something to keep in mind as well. Okay. Um, Andre from Slovenia. Hey, my wife's home country. Thank you, Andre, for stopping in. That is fantastic. And uh, what is the Teradek VDU? It, the Teradek VDU, I've talked about that a few times. We'll link to that video right here. The Teradek VDU is a 
dedicated hardware streaming device. It's a thousand bucks for this thing. It allows you to stream to pretty much any platform. You can you can connect it to Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or use your cell phone signal. Very, very versatile, very powerful. Doesn't always work exactly as I expect it to, so that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. I've had more problems with it than most things. Okay, uh, whew, I think that's everything in there. Um, there you go. All right, so that's it. That's everything. That's all the questions. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in on this one. Hey, don't forget, like it or don't like it. That's fine, too. Tell me why if you don't like it. Um, just be nice about it. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>